Hello, hello, and welcome back to Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we arrived in Sitopolis City, where Groudon and Kyogre are fighting, and their power is threatening to destroy the entire world, so we might want to do something about that. So, let's pick up where we left off. The one in town has taken a refuge and won't come out of their homes. Even I would rather not venture outside. I believe we talked to everyone inside the center here. Yes, I think she's the one who tries to teach Double Edge. So let's see what we can do about fixing this issue. We have the gym in the center of town. Leader Juan, the gym leader with the beauty of pure water. So we notice the change that the in Emerald the gym leader is different from the gym leader in Ruby and Sapphire for this particular gym. Kyogre, what's wrong? Look over here, it's the Red Orb. Calm down, Kyogre. It's no good. It's not responding at all. Groudon, please stop what you're doing. I know the extent of your power now. If you keep going all Hoenn, not just the Topolis will be utterly ruined. Oh, there's Steven. And some other citizens, too. Oh no, the Topolis silly will get wrecked. Go for it, red Pokemon. Don't back off, blue Pokemon. Hi, do you know the names of those Pokemon fighting over there? Looks like we have a fan of the battle. There's nothing ancient. There is an ancient legend that claims the land and sea were shaped by a colossal battle between Pokemon. Well, I'm seeing that happen with my very own eyes. Whoa, I never expected to be witness to something this huge. A big Pokemon is fighting with another big Pokemon. Please, someone make them stop. Just get this sense. Somehow, that the two Pokemon aren't angry. I think they probably can't control their own power. Those Pokemon fighting, Groudon and Kyogre. The two super ancient Pokemon were awakened from a long sleep, and now they're smashing each other with their uncontrollable energy. You being here now, I'll take to mean that you did you prepare to become involved in this crisis. Well then, there's someone that I'd like to meet. Come with me, please. You get to see a little bit more of the town. Listen. The same Groudon and program make you think Pokemon are to be feared? But that's not the true. That's not true. Pokemon are really more. Why am I asking you this? You are you know. Okay, here we are. Inside here, you'll find someone named Wallace. I think you have what's needed to help him. Person with a strong will and superior talent. A trainer who has knowledge and experience of many kinds of Pokemon. If such a person were to appear, 
I was instructed by Wallace to lead that trainer to this cave. I think you have what's needed to help him. Are you okay? So, now a tiny bit more town is opened up, but of course all the doors are locked. So we can't really do anything in terms of exploring inside the buildings. We should be able to access the Pokemon Center, or Pokemon Marks at the very least. What? What is happening? I really want to know, but it's too scary to go outside. This weather, did something awaken? And here we have the... My selection of... Powerful items, such as the Ultra Ball. This we're probably going to be encountering some legendary Pokemon in the future. It's probably good to start stocking up on Ultra Balls. Now, since I've got this situation here, I'm going to... Take this time to do a little bit of exploring outside of Sotopolis. that I did want to do one of them might take up a whole episode or two on its own depending on my luck familiar with the game knows what the significance of this route is. Let's see where I can get to the water. Is this the place? Perhaps? Try to hunt for Phoebus. I guess we're doing it. Probably a bad place to do it. Considering the whole world is in danger, but... Since I've already started, I guess I might as well commit. See if I can fish up Feebass because I did want to raise Feebass. I need to get the hang of fishing again. Let's see what happens when we get a nibble. 
It's a little hard to tell from behind the tree here. Yes, that's right, fishing in this game is a bit more advanced than in the previous games. I can catch it while I'm here. The dive, the dive ball doesn't really work on Pokemon you fish up. more appropriate. The Savage Pokemon. Carvana attacks ships in swarms, making them sink. Although it is said to be a very vicious Pokemon, it timidly flees as soon as it finds itself alone. Search this the entire waterways. Find the space with Phoebus in it. There are six tiles in all of the water on this route where Phoebus can spawn. In those tiles, there's a 50% chance of fishing up a fee bass. So, at least once you get to a tile, you should be able to find out if it's the one rather quickly. Carvana encounters. So I think I can write this tile off. Let's check this one now. Take a while. Okay, second bite, third bite, fourth bite, fifth bite, sixth bite. Man, that was a lot. I think I might swap Farinata from the front. We can use this as a little bit of quality time to boost Teresa's level a little bit. It's finally your time to start 
getting some levels in. Actually, I think that this detour does make some sense because after that battle in Moss Deep, I know that my team is a little bit behind the eight ball in terms of levels and strength, so... A little bit of exploring and leveling up won't hurt. It can only make things a little bit better as we head towards the end game. And considering you are the grass type on my team and the only one that is super effective against water types, you are going to play a big role in the upcoming gym, so you should be pushing towards level 50. Okay. Kill two birds with one stone. but doesn't have any any grass type moves. And being half ground type that means the water type attacks are neutral damage rather than resisted. But I still think it might be useful defensively in that gym. But you will definitely have to do the heavy lifting. So you need to get buff enough to do that lifting. And while we do that, we we'll also have a chance to fish up Feebass. Redundant having two water types on the team, but I'm not entirely against that concept, especially since I've had two grass types for a while so far. Is that the third? Probably not. Statistically, I feel like fishing three times in a spot is pretty optimal for checking for Feebass' presence. It's not super precise. But it's precise enough considering there are six tiles. Mm 
navigating these corners is difficult. Hopefully be a little bit easier once we've eliminated this corner. Deficient at open sea without having to navigate. Okay. This just your mini game, bro. Probably one of the things that makes this extra torturous for some people is that not only do you have to locate Phoebus in this large route where it is randomly in one of six tiles out of I think hundreds of tiles, but also the fishing is not as simple as press the button. go through this mini game where you time it out I'm trying to think I believe this is the most difficult fishing process in any of the games in the series all the rest of them Usually you only have to press the button once when there's when the rod shakes. But in generation three they went for this more realistic process. Okay, another Carvana. I'm wondering, is Carvana the only Pokemon on this route? Besides Feebass? Maybe it is. It's probably good because that makes things super simple. It's either Carvana or the minute you see something that's not Carvana, you know. It has to be Feebass if that's the only thing on this route. And I can consider this spot clean. Well, clean enough to pass on to the next spot. Super duper efficient. Yep. If I fish in this spot, I believe I have. Yes. I'll fish in this spot. No, that. Actually, I think that's... See, that's the thing about navigating these corners. So easy to lose. Oh, 
outside of what you're doing, so... I'm just going to do this. I'm going to just... That. that right before the Elite Four in these playthroughs, I go on a wild goose chase that takes multiple episodes like the Entei Hunt in Crystal. Thankfully, this is just one route, six stationary tiles, there's somewhere on this route. So this won't take that long, probably take I'm going to say within two to three episodes. In two to three episodes, I will have found Feebas here. I believe it was the second. Little Mega Drain. It's too bad this is before Giga Drain was introduced. with its higher base power. Okay, we'll consider this spot clean. is getting towards halfway to level 33. Soon we'll be done with the corner. And I can fish in those open water spots. It's much easier to keep track of what spots I've checked and what I. It's like move linearly and not have to worry about navigating these corners. I could just skip over. That's three spots in that corner. I could 
fits with those three. to the whole Pokéblock process. I think I'll be able to make make do with that. We'll worry about that process when we get to that bridge. Kind of work it takes to get a Milo tick. Just need to confirm this spot. Those are long sequences. That's another thing. The longer sequences should mean that you're getting a more powerful Pokemon. But they're just random. Sometimes it'll be a sequence of one up to what's the longest I've seen? Six or seven? Maybe ten? Okay, we're fishing right next to the shore here. Three. I should stay focused one tile at a time. Wow, Phoebus! All right, it's pretty lucky, actually. The Go right for the net ball. And we've got Phoebus. Phoebus, the fish Pokemon. Phoebus live in ponds that are heavily infested with weeds. Because of its hopelessly shabby appearance, it seems as if few trainers raise it. Okay, we're raising Phoebus, so we should give it a nickname. Uh, what? Yeah, 
tree, so only got three levels. Guess I may as well keep fishing. Pulling a few more levels. And I'll go ahead and use the few bass spots. Maybe I want fish in the sea bass spots. Because they seem to be kind of low leveled. Okay, yeah, I guess we'll do that. Catch some fee bass in the fee bass spot. Then move on and grind to level 34. I should probably give up fishing, but I think fishing is getting me better results in terms of Pokemon to grind on. Because Carvana Carvana not only gets up towards level 40 at the highest on this route, seemingly I saw when it was level 37. The they give okay experience, but there's also the bonus that Carvana should be giving attack EVs, which is good for Teresa being a physical attacker, even though Teresa can't fully exploit, even though she can't fully exploit her attack stat in this Game because all grass type attacks are special attacks. This is before they reworked that in Generation 4. And Pokemon could really take advantage of their attack stats. But all the fighting moves would be powerful and headbutt too. Grass moves can just do their damage, their coverage with stab and such. I think it might be that I should. Okay, what do I do? One more level. I'm fishing here. One more level from fishing, and then I'm gonna head out into the routes. The trying grind.
think it's not worth it. Yeah, the encounters are not guaranteed, so... You spoke to me, so you went to challenge me. Sure, I'll try out the Pokemon I caught while surfing. Okay, Chris. to win. Go for a surf on my Pokemon and fish off its back. It's an indescribably luxuriant moment. Fishing is too inefficient for grinding experience because between not getting a nibble and Pokemon getting away without being fished on the hook, turns out that too much, too high a percent of my encounters are duds that run away and escape. So I don't get any experience at all for the time I put in. Makes these random in the grass encounters much more efficient. Time wise. So I can get in three, two or three encounters in the time it takes to have one encounter. here on this Route 119. And then what else do I want to do? Oh, 
of the way, we've hit that. Ooh, Tropius. I realize you were here on this route. That's actually good. So I'll try to capture you. Okay, we've got Tropius. The fruit Pokemon flies by fla flapping its broad leaves. A bunch of fruit that grows around its neck is deliciously sweet. In the spring, it scatters pollen from its neck. Tropius is a really fun design. That being a grass flying type, it's just crawling with weaknesses, so it's not very. It's not a very good Pokemon to use. But in game, it's still usable if you're committed. You survive on what looks like 1 HP, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to capture you. on the Pokedex today, the rushing Pokemon. It is exceedingly fast if it only has to run in a straight line. When it spots pond-dwelling prey underwater, it quickly leaps in and catches it with its sharp claws. Take care of everything in terms of catching. And we can get back to getting Teresa to the next level. off here. Thank you for watching. Please 
uh, comment and like and subscribe. I'm trying to reach 400 subscribers by the end of the month, so I'd really appreciate your subscription if you'd like to see more content. And I will catch you all in the next episode where we will try to gain a few more levels and make a little bit more progress before eventually going on to see, take on Kyogre and Groudon and stop them from fighting and destroying the world here. So until then, goodbye.